Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today is my full review and discussion of the Kaiser Begletter XL button lock. Uh, this knife is for sure, I'm going to call it right now, uh, this knife is going on my top knives of 2022 without a doubt. This thing is, it, honestly, it's one of my favorite knives that I have gotten my hands on recently. It is so well done. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at why I like this knife as much as I do, what's good about it. There are a couple little things that aren't great about it. We'll also do some comparisons. So some other comparable knives that, you know, cost the same, have similar features. Um, <clears throat> And then finally, I'll give you my my sort of concluding thoughts. So let's go ahead and get started with the fact that, you know, you guys know I like larger knives. This is larger, nine inches overall, almost a four inch blade, three and seven eighths, uh, five and one eighth closed. All right, so that's a fairly substantial um, size to be folded and carried in your pocket. Of course, the deep carry clip is right near the tip. So uh, I'm a poet and don't even know it. Look at that. Uh, anyway, the deep carry clip is push right to the end here, meaning that you're going to need a little bit of a deeper pocket here. Um, if you're a girl watching this, you wear like the girl jeans with the really shallow pockets, which is totally unfair. I don't know why they do that, but nonetheless, that could be a problem for you. But you're probably, if that's, if you're a girl who's wearing those short pockets all the time, you're probably used to that and you've probably got a bunch of different solutions. For most guys' pants, I don't think you're going to have a problem. I, you know, I've carried this in everything from jeans to 5.11s to, you know, the, the kind of budget, lightweight hiking shorts that everybody, all the outdoor stores sell. Um, and I've never had an issue. So um, it does... It does sink nice and deep into the pocket. Not, not a lot of knife exposed there. So if that's a concern for you as well, that uh, may be a factor for you. All right. Um, in terms of how it carries, 5.3 ounces, uh, which is, I mean, for its size, that's not unreasonable. And really... If you look at the footprint this takes up in your pocket, it's it's not all that much different from a pair of two. Yeah, the pair of two is going to be shallower, right? It's not going to need those the depth, but um, it's it's really not that much of a, a bigger footprint than a pair of two in pocket. Obviously, it weighs a little bit more, but you know, five ounces for a nine-inch knife is not a big deal to me. And the grip area on this is again very substantial, over four inches. So you would have to have pretty massive hands to not be able to use and carry this knife. I think, you know, if you, if this grip area is not enough for you, I don't know, you'll have to switch to like a two-handed katana or something because uh, there's not many folding knives out there that I know of that have way more than four inches of grip area. Obviously those giant cold steels would be the, uh, the obvious, uh, option there if that was really a need okay uh so that size weight and and how it carries very very good i have no complaints about any of that uh the other thing is that grip area number uh does i find that helpful i like to have a little bit of extra real estate for my my hands even if i don't need all of it i like to the fact that it's there kind of makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside all right, so that's uh, size, weight, and carry. Let's talk about this blade. The blade is one of the things that I like. The only way that I could have liked this blade more if it was, was if it was a hollow grind, but that would be kind of, you know, departing from the bag letter design quite a bit. As it stands, you know, we've got about an eighth inch of eighth inch of steel here, a high flat grind, nice little swedge on this drop point blade, nice and flat there, good and thin behind the edge. Good job on the sharpening choil here and the plunge grind. All right, stone wash finish. And, and you know, this is, I've, I've done quite a bit of cutting with this. It's really, really nice. They've struck a really good balance here. It slices really well if you're doing food prep and that kind of thing with it, no issue whatsoever. But it's also being that thick, that flat grind and that substantial chunk, chunk of steel. It's also pretty confidence inspiring. I'm not too worried about, you know, having to be really, really gentle with it. Again, you know, I'm not going to go pounding this into a tree or anything like that because I, I don't know why I would do that with a knife. But anyway, all knives have their limitations, but this one is pretty comfortable in terms of me feeling like I can get a lot done with it and not have to worry about any kind of failure or anything like that. The steel here, we haven't touched on that yet, is 154 cm. Is that on this side or the other side? I think it's over here. Nope, bag letter on this side. Steel must be on this side. There you go, 154 cm, which is great. 
Um, especially at this price point, 154 CM is a very good steel. You'll recall that for years it was the standard offering on the Benchmade Griptilian. And, you know, in that, in that, configuration everyone you know praised it said it was totally appropriate for the knife that the the bench made obviously cost quite a bit more than this and everyone was happy with it so the fact that you know 154 cm has kind of become a budget steel now is really really cool and and a real win for us as end users right so uh very very happy with everything about this blade i mean 154 cm is going to hold an edge pretty well it's still going to be not terribly bad to sharpen it's pretty corrosion resistant uh yeah it's it's a really nice all-around edc steel um totally totally happy with it let's move on then from the blade which i really really like to the action itself so this is a button lock with a flipper and a thumb stud all of the deployment options work really really well i don't know if i can flick it with that thumb stud or not let me try yeah yeah, I can kind of do it, but I really have to think long and hard about it. So that's not a deployment method that I use. But uh, my, my way of thinking about this is, can I deploy the knife without having to make any conscious effort? And that's very, very easy. If I just put my finger on that thumb stud and give it a little flick, away it goes. Same with the flipper tab. No issues at all. This is not a knife that I find, you know, I don't, yeah, no, that's even a very, very light flick and it's gonna open. You cannot really get this to fail very easily. It's also dual row ceramic bearings. So the action on this is just spectacular. So, so good. Um, and and I, I don't know, you know, this is encouraging to me. This is like a $70 knife with dual row ceramic bearings. I, it still perplexes me why higher end knives, you know, I feel like Riot and Wii knives and Best Tech and Concept, at this point, like all of their high end knives should just be dual row ceramic bearings or needle bearings, uh, one or the other. Uh, the fact that they aren't is kind of perplexing to me. I know it takes a little more space in this area. I, I've had a couple of knife makers comment on that. But then my thought is, you know, if it's better, just accommodate that into your design. And I absolutely, you know, that not only do I believe it's better, but there's testing. Sheer Goroff tested, you know, they weighted pivots and then moved and, and noticed that uh, the needle bearings do a much better job distributing that load. Uh, and the same thing happens with side to side. Um, strength it just it's a better way of doing it all around so I, I don't know why we haven't switched to that yet um nonetheless this knife has switched to it so if you want it and you don't want to pay a lot of money uh then dual row ceramic bearings for like 70 bucks is a great great feature um the last thing we want to touch on is the button lock. We've talked about the flipper and the thumb stud deployment. The only thing, so the button lock works really well, very solid. And this is something I've got to give Kaiser some credit for. I'm sure they're not the only ones who've ever done this. But if you take a look in there, notice the taper on the interface. So when the button locks in, there's a bit of a taper there allowing for a bit of wear and tear over time, which is a great solution. I've had quite a few button locks develop blade play, and it's because it's sort of this very accurate interface, right? Like the button has got to pop right into there, into that groove. And if there's a little bit of room here, then you're going to get play. They have to fit perfectly. And over time, and gunk gets in there and all this kind of stuff. And, and if you put a lot of force on the blade, you could see marring one of these surfaces. All right, so the fact that this uh, has that bit of a taper to it so that the button kind of can lock in is a really, really good idea. And I've seen this on a bunch of, of button locks recently. So really, really nice way of implementing that. Um, and, and so, yeah, with this button lock, I'm very, very pleased. And hopefully again, like, like my dual row ceramic bearing <laughs> rant, uh, this is what we start seeing all the time. All right. Last comment on the way this locks up and how the action works. And that is about the detent. Uh, I already commented that you don't have to think about it, but I should have commented there that, yeah, the detent is really, really nice. All right. The only thing is, and I'll see if I can get it to pick up. I know it won't. Sorry. I'm using a mic that basically picks up my voice and that's it. Um, but there's a teeny little bit of lock stick here. Sometimes it's not, no, it's not, you know, anything substantial. Um, and, you know, what you end up doing is kind of thinking, oh, that's just how this button works. But there's a teeny bit of lock stick there. Uh, I'm not the least bit concerned about it. If it was, you know, difficult and I was having to use two hands to put, you know, that's that's not what happens. It's it's 
very, very minor, but every once in a while I get a bit of lockstick, like let's say every third flip or something like that. All right. And again, over time that may work out, although I've carried this and flipped it a lot, um, an unhealthy amount, in fact, uh, and it's still there. All right. Finally, let's go it over to the handle. You can see we've got my Carta handles here. Since my acquiring this knife, there have been a couple of other variants that have come out. So now I think there's a red one. There might be like black micarta. Um, I think there's a black blade with sort of a black micarta. Anyway, there are some options available out there now. Um, and I could be lying to you. Maybe those options are not in the XL, but I, I kind of suspect they are. So if you don't love the, the brown micarta, there are a few other options available these days. For me, this is just great. Like the brown and, and satin finishes and stonewash, uh, they, that works pretty well for me, but I, I know many of you watching will, will want to know that there are a bunch of variants available, or at least a few variants available. Um, I can't promise, uh, you know, I've been watching on uh, White Mountain Knives, kind of paying attention to when these become available. There could be some there now. I think they've gotten a second run, but with my luck, as I, it just inevitably happens, um, every single time I make a video and say, go to White Mountain Knives, which I'm going to say right now, go to White Mountain Knives, um, they end up sold out. <laughs> so hopefully there are some of these in stock in some variation. I think this variation, because it was the first one out, they could still have uh, some of these around. And look, um, if you can get any of these, get them. They are so well done. I mean, this has got to be one of the best thing Kaiser has done in a while. Uh, really, really happy with this. Finally, a little bit of discussion about, uh, well, let's, we haven't really talked about the handle much. So we've got brown micarta. Liners are slightly proud. They are milled out to save weight. I don't know how well you'll be able to see in there, but I'll try to show you a little bit. Anyway, the clip is very well done. Notice it's a deep carry clip with the flush screws that I like. It's not recessed into the handle. Okay, that that's an extra touch that's always welcome, but they didn't happen to do it here. Although I'm not, a, you know, I'm not really going to take points away for that or anything. There is a lanyard hole if you're into that sort of thing. Um, for me, that's, I mean, that's just a hole in my knife that I don't really need. Um, and finally, the ergonomics, the feel of this, they've got a bit of jimping here on the back of the blade. So in a saber grip, it works really, really well. Uh, hammer grip, in a hammer grip, I tried... If I purposely hit my knuckle on the on the button, I can unlock it, but my my hand doesn't naturally land that way. I have to purposely try. So very very good ergonomically. Uh, and as I say, I've done a few different things with this. The nice thing about my Carta is if it gets a little bit wet, it's still quite grippy. So I've used this in the kitchen a bit, and you know if you wash the vegetables and then you go cut them up, it's not a big deal. You still you can still kind of hold on to your knife. And the same is true uh, if you're outdoors doing something, uh, you know working and you're sweaty or dirty or whatever, uh, the micarta is a nice touch along those lines. And again, that comment is not going to apply, obviously, if you buy a variation of this that isn't done in micarta. And I think there are some out there. I feel like I've seen a red G10 one or a red and, and black like layer G10 or something along those lines. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Let's go ahead now that I've talked about all the features of this knife and give you some comparisons. And there are not a lot of comparisons out there, but there are some some button locks that have kind of hit recently. Civivi did a bunch of them. I don't have any of the Civivi button locks, but I do have another Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Cormorant. All right, you can see that it's it's smaller. This is an XL Cormorant. There's a lot to love about this knife as well. Uh, this is a knife that I wasn't sure about, but it's really grown on me over time. I actually would highly recommend the Cormorant at this point, even though I still would call it a pretty ugly looking knife. We also have the button lock Feldspar. Now the Feldspar is gonna cost a little bit less. The action is also pretty nice. This is a nicely done button lock. Um, hold on, I don't wanna say this and be wrong. The, yeah, look. So if you look in here, you can see the cutout to the button lock, for the button lock to engage with the blade is not tapered. Now, this is, is very solid, so they've got it nice and precise. Um, over time, I'm not sure if that'll remain the case, but there are some button lock options for you. Uh, the Cormorant in this variation is about the same price. There's also, you could go higher with this. You could go lower. I think these are like, I don't know, I want to say 80 bucks, but this is 3V steel and a hollow grind. For, for practicality, this is great. The other good thing about this, if you want, if you go, Kevin, yeah, the, 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 
bag letter is just too big for me, the Cormorant might be a great option for you. Um, the bag letter does have the same issue that I've always talked about with the bag letter. It's fine, but being a little bit smaller, um, I always feel just a little bit cramped using this knife. Not a lot. It's not like I'm like, oh man, I don't have room. It's, it's big enough, okay? But it's just a, a minor little issue that I, uh, that I take with it. Now, thinking of knives that are doing a great job for a really budget price and are available at White Mountain Knives, the the stuff from Dam Design is really really good. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you a specific model because I've looked at a few of them, and I'm probably gonna get at least one more. Um, if you guys want to make comments down in the description box for which one you think I should pick up, there's a few that are pretty compelling to me. So I'll probably end up getting another knife from Dam Designs from White Mountain Knives. By the way, uh, as we're talking about all this, if you want to go over there and do that, uh, use my discount code SHARPSTUFF and you'll save yourself a little bit of money. The other knives that I feel like I need to talk about, hold on, while we're on the subject of just crazy value for a dollar, um, who guys... If 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 you got it, if you got a hundred bucks in your pocket and you're burning, looking to spend it on a knife, I, oh, this would be such a hard decision. It depends. Um, the eighty ten would be more of an occasional carry because it's pretty big for EDC. Um, this would be a little more EDCable, but still provide a lot of size and capability. So if it's something, if you say, yeah, I want something bigger, but I want it to be a little more comfortable in pocket, this is a good option. If you want something bigger and you're not that concerned about comfort in pocket, go with the eighty ten. It is a little more expensive as well. The eighty ten's lights though are superb. Cold Steel has done a really, really good job uh let's throw in a couple of other knives uh first of all the petrified fish uh this is the um the beluga update with the um with the tanto blade again it's not a button lock but it's you know it's my carta it's pretty budget friendly it's a lot of knife for your dollar spent which is kind of where it fits into this video finally i've got a knife sitting here <laughs> that i've already done a first impressions on and i was kind of ticked off about it uh this is the oh my goodness eutectic um trinity and I mean, this is a fine knife, but this is an example of not getting value for your dollar. Um, you know, I would pick the Kaiser for like $10 less every day and twice on Sundays over this Eutectic. Now, if this Eutectic was 50 bucks, that would be much more desirable and much more reasonable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but we have Micarta again, D2 steel, a liner lock. This is a Civivi. Um, and, and there's just, it's not doing anything truly special, but it's charging a pretty big premium where here you're paying the same premium. Like you're paying extra than you would for a budget liner lock flipper, but you're getting all kinds of extra features and better materials. So it, it makes a lot more sense to me. So I just want to throw that in there again to complain about the value. Uh, Leong Ma is going to hate me for harping on this all the time. Anyway, that's fine. Um, conclusion. Yeah, guys, great knife. Uh, you, you, you know, it's this is a, a huge win. This is one of the best things I've ever seen Kaiser do. Um, you know, they, they've had a, they've been pretty compelling lately. I, I think they've turned a bit of a corner. Uh, there were a couple of years there where I was like, "What happened to Kaiser?" It's like they just gave up. But um, then this knife came out, and the Cormorant came out, and the, there are a couple of other Kaisers that have been pretty compelling recently. So all of that leads me to say, yeah, I've had to change my mind about Kaiser a bit there. Uh, much more compelling than uh, than I would have said before. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check the channel sponsor, White Mountain Knives. Huge thank you to them for um, being an ongoing supporter of the channel. And a huge help thanks to you guys for using that link and going over there and picking up stuff because that helps the channel as well. We'll talk to you soon.